Hello, and welcome to this Anatomy Physiology Bio 201 video lecture on the brain and cranial nerves. I'm Mr. Kennedy, and I'll be your guide as we explore this area of the body together. We'll begin today by considering the principal parts of the brain. In this graphic, we see the cerebrum, cerebellum, brainstem, and diencephalon labeled. Take a moment to pause the video and familiarize yourself with each labeled structure in this diagram. Protection. The brain, our most important organ, is very well protected. It is protected by cranial bones, cranial meninges, and cerebral spinal fluid. Here we see the cranial bones and meninges close up as they encase or encapsulate the brain. This is a sagittal section of the extensions of the dura mater to further illustrate how they wrap around the brain to protect it. Blood flow to the brain. Our most vital organ demands a massive amount of blood. Blood flows to the brain via the vertebral and carotid arteries and flows back to the heart via the jugular veins. The blood flow through the brain and vital structures associated with it are illustrated at the bottom of this slide. The brain utilizes about 20% of the body's oxygen supply. Any interruption of the oxygen supply can result in weakening, permanent damage, or death of brain cells. Glucose deficiency may produce mental confusion, dizziness, convulsions, and unconsciousness. The blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier protects brain cells from harmful substances and pathogens by serving as a selective barrier to prevent passage of many substances from the blood into the brain. The blood-brain barrier can even prevent the entry of therapeutic drugs. Injury to the brain may cause a breakdown of the blood-brain barrier permitting the passage of normally restricted substances into the brain tissue. Cerebral spinal fluid. Cerebral spinal fluid is a liquid that protects the brain and spinal cord against chemical and physical injuries. It carries oxygen, glucose, and other important substances from the blood to nervous tissue cells. This diagram illustrates the ventricles within the brain and brain stem that the cerebral spinal fluid travels through. Take a moment to familiarize yourself with these labeled structures. Here we see a slightly different view of the ventricles and the choroid plexus. The ventricles of the brain contain the cerebral spinal fluid and the choroid plexus makes it. This graphic illustrates the flow of cerebral spinal fluid in and around the brain. The graphic at the right illustrates the specific steps that the cerebral spinal fluid follows as it completes its circulation around the brain. Regions of the brain. As we explore the regions of the brain, we'll begin with the brain stem. The brain stem is composed of the medulla oblongata, pons, and midbrain. Each of these structures can be seen in the diagram to the bottom right. Take a moment to familiarize yourself with their location. This is the medulla oblongata. It is contiguous with the superior aspect of the spinal cord and it contains portions of both motor and sensory tracts. As you examine the medulla oblongata on this slide, also take note of the cranial nerves that are attached to it. The cranial nerves specific to the medulla oblongata include the vestibular cochlear and hypoglossial nerve. The medulla also has some structural reasons to be familiar with. Its pyramids and inferior obulary nuclei are most important. The functional regions of the medulla oblongata control things like heart rate, respiratory rate, vasoconstriction, swallowing, coughing, vomiting, sneezing, and hiccuping. Next is the pons. The pons is located superior to the medulla oblongata 
and it links parts of the brain with one another by way of nerve tracks. Use this diagram below to locate the pons. The pons innervates or works with the trigeminal, abducin, facial, and vestibular branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve. The pons functions include acting as a relay nerve um, impulse station connected to the voluntary skeletal muscle movements from the cerebrum to the cerebellum. It also controls respiration. The midbrain. The midbrain is located superior to the medulla oblongata and extends from the pons to the diencephalon. The ocular motor and trochlear nerve pass through the midbrain. The structural regions of the midbrain that are important include the cerebral peduncles, corpus quadrigemina, substantia nigra, red nuclei, and medial lemniscus. The midbrain's functions include acting as a conveyor of motor impulses from the cerebrum to the cerebellum and the spinal cord. It sends sensory imp impulses from the spinal cord to the thalamus and regulates auditory and visual reflexes. This is a little bit more close-up look at the midbrain. Take a moment to familiarize yourself with each of the labeled structures. The reticular formation. The reticular formation helps regulate muscle tone, alerts the cortex to incoming sensory signals, and is responsible for maintaining consciousness and awakening from sleep. This table will provide you with a detailed summary of the functions of the principal parts of the brain. Take a moment to review each part and its function. Next is the cerebellum. The cerebellum occupies the inferior and posterior aspects of the cranial cavity and consists of two hemispheres and a central vermis, each illustrated here. The cerebellum functions to coordinate skeletal muscle contractions and maintain normal muscle tone, posture, and balance. Here we see a mid-sagittal section of the cerebellum. Next we have the diencephalon. The diencephalon is composed of the thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus. Use the diagram on this slide to locate each. The thalamus is located superior to the midbrain and contains nuclei that serve as relay stations for all sensory impulses except for smell to the cerebral cortex. Here we see a close-up of the thalamus, which is color-coded to indicate where incoming sensory information is handled. The hypothalamus is found inferior to the thalamus. It has four major regions, it controls many body activities, and is one of the major regulators of homeostasis. This diagram details the structure of the hypothalamus. Take a moment to look it over and to review each of the labeled structures. The epithalamus. The epithalamus lies superior and posterior to the thalamus and contains the pineal gland, which secretes melatonin and the habnular nuclei, which are involved in olfaction. Circumventricular organs, CVOs, of the diencephalon. Parts of the diencephalon, the CVOs, can monitor chemical changes in the blood because they lack a blood-brain barrier. CVOs include the hypothalamus, a portion of it, anyway, the pineal gland, and the pituitary gland. CVOs coordinate homeostatic activities of the endocrine and the nervous system. This table will again provide you with a summary of the principal parts of the brain. Note each part and its detailed function listed.
Next, we have the cerebrum. The cerebral cortex is composed of gray matter which contains billions of neurons. Gyri, fissures, and sulci can be identified on the cortex. Deep to the cortex is white matter composed of tracts of neurons that connect parts of the brain to each other and the spinal cord. A bundle of white matter tracts called the corpus callosum connects the right and left hemispheres of the cerebrum. This diagram will provide you with the beginnings of the anatomical details of the cerebral cortex. Take a moment to familiarize yourself with the basic structures listed here, including the gyrus, sulcus, and fissures in the brain. Lobes of the cerebrum. The cerebrum can be divided into the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, occipital lobe, and insula. Each are color coordinated and labeled here for your review. This is a slightly different view of the brain and is meant to highlight the cerebral white matter. Next, we consider the basal nuclei of the cerebrum. The basal nuclei are paired masses of gray matter in each cerebral hemisphere, which can be seen illustrated in the bottom left-hand corner of this slide. Take a moment to review the basal nuclei. Next, we have the limbic system. The limbic system is found in the cerebral hemispheres and the diencephalon. The functional organization of the cerebral cortex. Specific types of sensory, motor, and integrative signals are processed in certain regions of the cerebral cortex. Those regions are referred to as the sensory regions, motor regions, and association regions. This diagram details the sensory areas of the cerebral cortex. Each is color-coded and pinned with a number. Take some time to review the labeled structures that you see here in this diagram. This is a detailed breakdown of the motor areas of the cerebral cortex. Again, structures are labeled and pinned for your review. And finally, we have the association areas of the cerebral cortex. Take one more moment to review the location of each of the association areas. Hemispheric lateralization. This table will provide you with some detailed functional differences between the right and left hemispheres. Each side of your brain is said to have a specific function. There are a combination of truths and old wives' tales that are used to describe what each is responsible for, such as the left side of your brain being slated as preferring math, science, and analytical activities, while the right side of your brain prefers colors, shapes, and art. This table will introduce you to and provide you with a summary of your cranial nerves. Be sure to spend a moment looking over each cranial nerve by name and number, the components that it possesses, and its principal function. As I go through the next several slides, I'll show you each of these cranial nerves. Here we have the anatomy of the cranial nerves. This is your olfactory nerve, or nerve one. Here we have your optic nerve, or nerve two. This is your ocular motor nerve, or nerve three, responsible for movements of the eye. This is your trochlear nerve.
This is your trigeminal nerve, or nerve 5. Here we have the abducens nerve, nerve 6. Nerve 7 is your facial nerve. Nerve 8 is your vestibular cochlear nerve, as seen here on this diagram. Your glossopharyngeal nerve is nerve 9. Nerve 10 is your vagus nerve. The accessory nerve is nerve 11. The hypoglossal nerve is nerve 12. As we bring this video lecture to a close, we'll touch briefly on the development of the nervous system. The nervous system begins with a thickening of the ectoderm called the neural plate, which is illustrated in this diagram. Note the neural plate, folds, and neural groove that develop early in embryological development. The parts of the brain develop from secondary vesicles that are illustrated here. Aging. Aging in the nervous system. Aging in your nervous system can result in the loss of neurons, diminished capacity for sending nerve impulses to and from the brain, diminished ability to process information, decreased conduction velocity, slowing of voluntary motor movements, increased reflex time, and degenerative changes in vision, hearing, sight, taste, smell, touch, and balance. And this concludes our coverage of the brain and cranial nerves.